What's up everybody? So today I am yet again upgrading my desk, my gaming and editing setup basically. I've upgraded it a couple of times and there's a lot of parts to it and today I'm actually going to be painting the walls back here. That's why everything's blank. This is where all the videos usually take place. But I thought this would be a great opportunity uh, to just go piece by piece through all of my setup. That way I, you guys can get ideas on how to set up your own desks and gaming setup. So, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and start the first step. And I'm just gonna be painting all these walls a dark gray back here. All right, so it's a different day. The room's all painted now and I'm really happy with the way everything turned out here. And also I just kinda, I wanted to do a little something to make my room stand out and not just be, you know, just the plain white that you see in everybody's house. So today I'm gonna be doing the first steps and putting the desk back together. And also when I can, I will mention uh, more budget friendly and affordable alternatives to some of the parts I'm using. All right, so the desk I'm using is from Ikea. Um, it is not the cheapest desk, but it works well for me and I like how it looks. So we will be starting with the Alex drawers from Ikea. Um, they come in a couple different colors and I just find it really easy to keep my desk clean when I have drawers. But these are a little pricey so you can always save money there by just getting table legs instead of drawers. So I have two of these normal ones and I just got a third one that has an extra big uh, filing drawer at the bottom. So I was gonna set them up like this. So I have one desktop here and another one here for an L shape. Uh, this was gonna be for my computer and gaming and all that editing. And this was just gonna be for actually working on parts and showing stuff on YouTube videos, things like that. So uh, just so I didn't have too many drawers, I was gonna put legs in that back corner. All right, so we just put the legs on my new desktop here. Um, I just aligned it next to that drawer so um, they wouldn't be sticking out when it's all set up. But I just want to mention that these are not the normal, I believe, all this legs. These are Olaf IKEA legs. So these are adjustable somehow for height. And I'm doing that because um, I got standoffs for these drawers to make the desk a little bit higher. So I got these standoffs, they're technically uh, furniture legs, but I got them in this nice black finish here. I was looking, I think even though this board is thinner than the actual desktop, I think I'm gonna screw these into the drawers themselves. That way I can move the drawers wherever I want and the desktop will always sit on top of it. Whereas if I did it the other way, I would have to re-drill if I ever decided to change something. All right, so we stayed up late last night and got all the standoffs installed and got the two desktops on there. So let me go over a couple of things. So there are the standoffs. I don't know why, but they came with these like gold looking screws, but I forgot to mention they are four inches. Again, the reason I got these is so it's a comfortable sitting or standing height for me to be able to stand and work on things over here or sit down, use a computer over there. I've heard from some people that raising their desk a little bit makes it more comfortable for them to sit. Um, I was fine with how it was before, but I wanted to raise this side so I didn't want to have, you know, two uneven desktops there. So these desktops um, are also from Ikea. They are called Carlby counters because they're technically in the counter section. And they're both just about 79 inches long or 200 centimeters, depending on where you live. And as you can see on this side underneath here, I actually put four legs just cause I believe their weight limit each was between 25 and 30 pounds each. And this desktop already weighs a lot. So I just put four over there. That way I wouldn't have to worry about how much stuff I put on top of it. So these look really nice, but again, if you want to save a ton of money, you can get Ikea Limon uh, desktops instead. And then finally, I have two Vivo monitor mounts. Uh, they do sell a single mount that would cost you less than getting two, but I found that when I had the single mount, in order to get the, the two screens touching together in the middle, uh, the elbows bent out and the screens were kind of far away from the wall. With these two single mounts, I could get the monitors pushed further back. And these actually came with two of these joints right here. And I ended up getting rid of one on each side. That way these have space to be in the middle. They're not like sticking out the end or anything ugly looking like that. So I'm happy with how this is, but if you want to save money, you could get that single dual mount. 
so that's what the monitors look like when they're mounted and they are fairly close to the back wall there they're still you know touching in the middle and all that there's no awkward gap and also I like how the two uh, mounting poles look there because if I didn't take out that extra piece um, the poles would actually be sticking out the edge of the monitors sticking over here and that wouldn't look nice so there are actually clips that help you with your cable management on the mounts and at the bottom you can see the wires are just kind of hidden behind the poles and you can make it a little bit cleaner than that with the help of some zip ties. Alright, so today we'll be putting in some acoustic foam on the wall. Um, I'm mostly doing it for looks, but it'll also help with the echo in here a little bit. Um, the couch has already helped with the echo a lot. But you know, it came with these sticky things, and I tested one on the wall inside my closet. And if you can see that, it just totally shreds up the wall if you need to replace it or readjust it. So, so per another guy's recommendation, I'm going to be using these T-pins. So they're just kind of like nails, but you can push them in. All right, so there's all the foam on the wall now. It turned out looking pretty good. Um, I don't know how well you could see on camera, but some of these push pins, they do kind of stand out a little bit, but they made it really easy to install all of this because every panel is like not exactly the same size. So there's kind of some stretching and squishing and everything to get it all looking nice. That's kind of your call, I guess, if you want to use um, adhesive stuff or push pins like that. but. I'm happy with the way it turned out. If you remember before, I had an LED strip on the back of the desk itself. And um, that looks fine, but I wanted to try something new. So I'm going to get an LED strip on the back of these monitors, put one on the back of the PC, and then I already have an RGB light for that lamp so I could change the colors and all that. And then finally, one of the last things for my setup is my chair. This is a DX Racer OHRV001NB. And I feel like a lot of people like to hate on DX Racer chairs. Um, I just think they expect them to be perfect. They are not perfect, but they are good chairs. Um, you're definitely getting a better chair than like a $100 chair at the store or something like that. But yeah, mine is definitely comfortable for me. And I like that blue color on there. So I tried not to have too many colors in my setup here. So now that I got all my lights installed, I'm going to make them all blue so everything will match. All right, so there it is all done, all the lights on and matching and everything. Um, this room looks completely different than it did from just a few weeks ago. And I still got a lot of work to do on the cable management down there, but I'm happy with my gaming and working and editing space up here. Also with this new desk, I'm able to have enough space for both of my 24 inch monitors and my audio monitors also because I moved the PC over there. And also I wanted to note, I only put LEDs on the back of the PC on this side and on the top side, not on the back because it would light up all the cables in the back and it, it didn't look good. And then anytime I make a video and show you guys something, I'm always having to clear out my area. So I'm excited that I have this side over here now so I could you know, put things there. I want to eventually get some sort of overhead mount for the camera so I can have an overhead and have a camera over there and just show stuff here, you know, and I don't know. I think it'll be easier to make videos in here now and plus it looks nice. And then arguably one of the biggest upgrades in here is having this couch in here because now, you know, there wasn't anywhere for anyone else to sit. And now, you know, my wife and the baby, they're much more patient with me when I'm editing or whatever. Um, just chilling out over here, hanging out with me in the same room. And I was going to put some shelves up here. And then I thought about maybe putting some more foam up here. And then I thought maybe hanging some guitars on the walls or something. So that, that wall's still undecided. But that's kind of the nice thing about desks and setups is that you're always changing. You're always upgrading everything. And just as you go, you figure out ways how you can set up stuff to better help you do things. So it's been a lot of work getting this whole room changed the past like two weeks and my wife helped me out a lot and I'm just looking at it in my camera monitor here for the first time and it looks really good. It looks 
totally different. You wouldn't even think this was the same room. But yeah, I will try to link as much stuff as I can down in the description below to help you guys out with your setups. I hope this inspired you. I hope you learned some things from it. So I'm excited to make more videos in this room. Um, thank you guys all for all of your support on my videos. Um, it's kind of overwhelming sometimes, but I'm very thankful for you. And that's it. We'll see you in the next one.